listening to the Holy Bible One Year Challenge with Master Storyteller Michael Wood, featuring the easy to read version and used by permission from Bible Week International. Enjoy the show! Hello, everyone. Welcome to day 117. We are continuing in the book of Joshua, and he's already conquered the areas east of the Jordan River, west of the Jordan River, and the cities in the south. All that's left is the north cities. But there is a king in the north, and he decides to band together all the kings in the north in a final confrontation with Joshua. And we've seen God use everything from hailstones to confusion to the sound of trumpets. Will God be with Joshua during this final confrontation? The stakes are high. And if Joshua wins this, then Israel will have conquered all of the promised land, just as the Lord promised them. We are also continuing in the book of Luke. And Jesus has been nailed to a cross, executed by Rome, who's very good at executions, by the way. But his tomb is empty. And we get to see the followers of Jesus try to work out for themselves the recent events. And there have been reports that Jesus is alive and is walking around. And we see the followers hoping that it's true, wondering if it's true. And for some, Jesus could be standing right there talking to them and they don't recognize him. But then the question comes, what would happen if they did recognize him? Stay with us to see what happens and refer to your show notes to follow along. If you enjoy the show, visit me at patreon.com forward slash storymaster. You'll find the link in the description box below. By contributing as little as $1 per month, you will enable me to continue this ministry. And you'll get cool rewards too. Together, we're going to get through the Bible in one year. Let's get started. Joshua chapter 11, defeating the northern cities. When King Jabin of Hazor heard about everything that had happened, he decided to call together the armies of several kings. He sent a message to King Jobab of Madden, to the king of Shimron, to the king of Aksap, and to the kings of the north, in the hill country and in the desert. Jabin sent the message to the kings of Kinneret, the Negev, and the western foothills. He also sent the message to the king of Naphoth Dor, in the west. Jabin sent the message to the kings of the Canaanites, the east and in the west. He sent the message to the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, and Jebusites, living in the hill country. He also sent the message to the Hivites, living below Mount Hermon, near Mizpah. So the armies of all these kings came together. There were many fighting men and many horses and chariots. It was a very large army. It looked as if there were as many men as grains of sand on the seashore. All these kings met together at the brook of Murrah. They joined their armies together into one camp and made plans for the battle against Israel. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Don't be afraid of that army, because I will allow you to defeat them. By this time tomorrow, you will have killed them all. You will cut the legs of the horses and burn all their chariots. So Joshua and his whole army surprised the enemy and attacked them at the brook of Merah. The Lord allowed Israel to defeat them. The army of Israel defeated them and chased them to greater Sidon, Misrephoth, Maim, and the valley of Mizpah in the east. The army of Israel fought until none of the enemy was left alive. Joshua did what the Lord had told him to do. He cut the legs of their horses and burned their chariots. Then Joshua went back and captured the city of Hazor 
and killed its king. Hazor was the leader of all the kingdoms that fought against Israel. The army of Israel killed everyone in that city and completely destroyed all the people. There was nothing left alive. Then they burned the city. Joshua captured all these cities and killed all their kings. He completely destroyed everything in these cities, just as the Lord's servant Moses had commanded. But the army of Israel did not burn any cities that were built on hills. The only city built on a hill that they burned was Hazor. This is the city Joshua burned. The Israelites kept for themselves all the things and all the animals they found in the cities. But they killed all the people there. They left no one alive. Long ago, the Lord commanded his servant Moses to do this. Then Moses commanded Joshua to do this. Joshua obeyed God and did everything that the Lord had commanded Moses. So Joshua defeated all the people in that whole area. He had control over the hill country, the Negev, all the area of Goshen, the western foothills, the Jordan Valley, and the mountains of Israel, and all the hills near them. Joshua had control of all the land from Mount Halak near Seir to Baal Gad in the valley of Lebanon, below Mount Hermon. He captured all the kings in that land and killed them. Joshua fought against them for many years. Only one city in all the land made a peace agreement with Israel. That was the Hivite city of Gibeon. All the other cities were defeated in war. The Lord made those people feel brave enough to fight against Israel. This was so that Israel could destroy them completely without mercy, just as the Lord had commanded Moses to do. The Anakites lived in the hill country in the area of Hebron, Debir, Anab, and Judah. Joshua fought them and completely destroyed all the people and their towns. There were no Anakites left living in the land of Israel. The only Anakites who were left alive were in Gaza, Gath, and Ashdod. Joshua took control of the whole land of Israel as the Lord had told Moses long ago. The Lord gave that land to Israel as he promised, and Joshua divided the land among the tribes of Israel. Finally, the fighting ended and there was peace in the land. Joshua chapter 12, the kings defeated by Israel. The Israelites had taken control of the land east of the Jordan River. They had all the land from Arnon Ravine to Mount Hermon and all the land along the eastern side of the Jordan Valley. These are all the kings the Israelites defeated to take this land. They defeated King Sihon of the Amorites living in the city of Heshbon. He ruled the land from Aurora at the Arnon Ravine to the Jabbok River. His land started in the center of that ravine. This was their border with the Ammonites. Sihon ruled over half of the land of Gilead. He also ruled over the eastern side of the Jordan Valley from Lake Galilee to the Dead Sea, or Salt Sea. And he ruled from Beth Jeshema to the south to the hills of Pisgah. They also defeated King Og of Bashan. Og was from the Raphaites. He ruled the land of Ashtaroth and Edria. Og ruled over Mount Hermon, Selica, and all the area of Bashan. His land ended where the people of Gesher and Maka lived. Og also ruled half of the land of Gilead. This land ended at the land of King Sihon of Heshbon. The Lord's servant Moses and the Israelites defeated all these kings. And Moses gave that land to the tribe of Reuben, the tribe of Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh. Moses gave them this land to be their own. Joshua and the Israelites defeated the kings of the land west of the Jordan River. This land was in the area west of Baal Gad, in the Lebanon Valley as far as Mount Halak that rises towards Seir. Joshua divided it among the tribes. This included the hill country, the western foothills, the Jordan Valley, 
the eastern mountains, the desert, and the Negev. This was where the Hittites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites had lived. These are the kings the Israelites defeated. The king of Jericho, the king of Ai near Bethel, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, the king of Eglon, the king of Gezer, the king of Debir, the king of Gader, the king of Hormah, the king of Arad, the king of Libna, the king of Adullam, the king of Makeda, the king of Bethel, the king of Tapua, the king of Hefer, the king of Aphek, the king of Sharon, the king of Madon, the king of Hazor, the king of Shimron Meron, the king of Akshaph, the king of Tanakh, the king of Megiddo, the king of Kadesh, the king of Jokneam and Carmel, the king of Dor at Mount Dor, the king of Goyim and Gilgal, and the king of Tursa. The total number of kings was 31. Luke chapter 24, verses 1 to 35. Very early Sunday morning, the women came to the tomb where Jesus' body had been laid. They brought the sweet-smelling spices they had prepared. They saw that the heavy stone that covered the entrance had been rolled away. They went in, but they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. They did not understand this. While they were wondering about it, two men in shining clothes stood beside them. The women were very afraid. They bowed down with their faces to the ground. The men said to them, Why are you looking for a living person here? This is a place for dead people. Jesus is not here. He has risen from death. Do you remember what he said in Galilee? He said that the Son of Man must be handed over to the control of sinful men, be killed on a cross, and rise from death on the third day. Then the women remembered what Jesus had said. The women left the tomb and went to find the eleven apostles and the other followers. They told them everything that happened at the tomb. These women were Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and some others. They told the apostles everything that had happened. But the apostles did not believe what they said. It sounded like nonsense. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb to see. He looked in, but he saw only the cloth that Jesus' body had been wrapped in. It was just lying there. Peter went away to be alone, wondering what had happened. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were going to a town named Demas. It was about 11 kilometers from Jerusalem. They were talking about everything that had happened. While they were talking, discussing these things, Jesus himself came near and walked with them. But they were not allowed to recognize Jesus. He asked them, What's this I hear you discussing with each other as you walk? They both stopped, their faces looking very sad. And then one of them, named Cleopas, said, You must be the only person in Jerusalem who doesn't know what has just happened there. Jesus said, what are you talking about? It's about Jesus, the one from Nazareth. To God and to all the people, he was a great prophet. He said and did many powerful things. But our leaders and the leading priests handed him over to be judged and killed. They nailed him to a cross. We were hoping that he would be the one to free Israel. But then... All this happened, and now, something else, it has been three days since he was killed, but today, some of our women told us an amazing thing. Early this morning, they went to the tomb where the body of Jesus was laid, but they could not find his body there. They came and told us they had seen some angels in a vision. The angels told them that Jesus was alive. So some of our group went to the tomb too. It was just as the women said. They saw the tomb. 
but they did not see Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, Why is it so hard for you to understand and accept all that the prophets wrote? They said that the Messiah must suffer these things before his time of glory. Then he began to explain everything that had been written about himself in the scriptures. He started with the books of Moses and then talked about what all the prophets had said about him. They came near the town of Emmons, and Jesus acted as if he did not plan to stop there. But they wanted him to stay. They begged him. You're staying with us. It's almost night. There's hardly any daylight left. So he went in to stay with them. Jesus joined them for the evening meal. He took some bread and gave thanks. Then he broke some off and gave it to them. That's when both of them were allowed to recognize him. But then he disappeared. He said to each other, When he talked to us on the road, it, it felt like a fire burning in us. How exciting it was when he explained to us the true meaning of the scriptures. So right then they got up and went back to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven apostles meeting together with the other followers of Jesus. The group told them, The Lord really has risen from death. He appeared to Simon. Then the two followers told them what had happened on the road. They talked about how they recognized Jesus when he shared the bread with them. Psalms 51, verses 10 through 19. For the music director, a psalm of David written when Nathan the prophet came to him after David's sin with Bathsheba. This is part two. God, create a pure heart in me. Give me a new desire to be faithful. Don't push me away or take your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy I felt when you saved me. Fill me with the desire to obey you. I will teach the guilty how you want them to live, and the sinners will come back to you. God, spare me from the punishment of death. My God, you are the one who saves me. Let me sing about all the good things you do for me. My Lord, I will open my mouth and sing your praises. You don't really want sacrifices, or I would give them to you. The sacrifice that God wants is a humble spirit. God, you will not reject a person who comes to you with a broken heart, ready to obey. God, please be good to Zion. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then, you can enjoy the kind of sacrifices you want. You will receive burnt offerings, and people will again offer bulls on your altar. Thank you, everyone. That was day 117. Join us for day 118. Joshua must divide the land among the tribes. And then one man named Caleb decides to come up and claim his part of the land for a military campaign that happened during the days of Moses. And we will finish the book of Luke, where Jesus appears to more of his followers. And you'll see what ultimately happens to the Messiah as he gives his final instructions. We hope you enjoyed today's verses. Be sure to leave us a positive review and to share this podcast with your friends and family. Please join us for the next episode as we experience the Bible in one year. Did you know we offer online courses in creative writing, literature, and web design? Visit us at storymaster.online to learn more.